Ever wonder how to make one of these YouTube videos? Well, we're talking about it here on The Journey. Hey, 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 get out of here. We're, we're trying to film. <laughs> Come on, man. All right, back to the episode. We're talking about how to make a YouTube video, but I think it's important to talk about why it's so important, especially with today's society. 1.9 billion people log into YouTube every month. That's nearly half the internet, which is insane. And 96% of 18 to 24 year old American internet users are on YouTube. That basically means that every Gen Zer is on the internet on YouTube. So if you don't realize how important that is, let's break it down, right? Those those Gen Zers are your customers and are gonna be your future customers, and they're gonna influence those younger than them and mm -hmm. older than them. So you have to be on YouTube. And it's just where all the attention is, right? I don't think anyone is watching cable TV all that much anyways. I know I don't. When was the last time you looked at a commercial? I don't even remember. We, we're in a society of binging, right? With all mm -hmm. the Netflix and Hulu and Disney Plus now, uh, and YouTube being so popular and so prevalent, like you have to put your content where es essentially your, your t the attention is where the eyes are, which is why YouTube has to be in your, your marketing strategy and your business plan. All right, so Neely, what do I need to get started making videos on YouTube? So I think to, to start, right, you need a camera. It's, it's a video, right? So you don't have to go out and buy a super expensive camera. Most of you have a pretty good camera just on your phone already that you can use and start shooting. Uh, you can go out and buy a video camera that's specifically just for video. Mm -hmm. I think they start at like, typically like $50 for a decent one uh, and obviously get way more expensive. I typically use just a DSLR because uh, I take pictures as well, but it takes pretty good video too. You just need something that you can point and shoot. And I think what a lot of people get hung up on is I have to have like super expensive equipment mm -hmm. to get started to make awesome YouTube videos. And that's far from the case. Like start small, start with something that you have now and then work on it and get better. Because to be honest, some of the first YouTube videos you make and some of the first YouTubes I made were kind of cringy, right? <laughs> they weren't the, the best that I've ever put through, but I practiced and practiced mm -hmm. and I got my content good enough to where now when I did use that great equipment, it just made me look so much better. I think that's some character that's added to your whole story. Now right. you can look back after all that time that you spent making it in the beginning with trial and error. Once you get into the point where Nilly is and your content is high quality, professional looking, then you can even make a video about, hey, I wasn't always like this. Look at how I started. All right, so Nilly, I've been dying to ask, what is this gremlin looking thing right here? This little guy right here? Uh, that's a shotgun microphone. So I think a lot of people use it, especially on DSLRs or video cameras uh, because it makes uh, your audio sound a lot clearer and mm. it's directional with how it picks up sound. Most microphones like this uh, Blue Yeti over here, uh, which is also great for like podcast style or in front of a camera, not very active. Uh, it's gonna be directional. So if we're right here, it's gonna try to get the audio from here, not, not everywhere else. Mm -hmm. Makes it a little bit more clear, especially when you're out and about. There's a lot of other random noises mm -hmm. or we have the, I'm sitting on a desk like now, I would probably use something like this or like these to get that directional sound. So you can use a lot of different things depending on what you're really looking for or if you have maybe like an interview type style. Mm -hmm. uh, there's lavalier mics you can use that kind of hide up. And oh, they, that little like interview style. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So there's lots of different mics anywhere from the shotgun mic to the lavalier to the podcast mic type. Uh, there's lots of options that you can use. And then our next point here says you should try writing a script. While optional, doing this before settling on a video genre. But really, you want to write some <laughs> sort of a script. Uh, not necessarily has to be word for word of exactly what you're going to say. Typically, people sound robotic when they do that. You want to have some sort of like conversation outline that mm -hmm. you want to hit. Maybe the high level points to yeah. help you kind of jog your memory of what you want to talk about. Because as soon as that camera hits, if you're like me, you just get film brain where it's just, it just blinks out. You just don't know what you're talking about. I've been rambling. I don't even know the last 30 seconds of what I've been talking about. So make sure you script. have something, right? So you can <laughs> hit those points. And another tip about scripts, if you have someone working with you behind the camera, you can have them hold up cue cards so you can just read it through there. Or if you're by yourself and say you're using your phone, there are teleprompter apps that are for iPhone and Android, which will scroll your script as it's recording you so you can just read right from it. Yeah, that helps out, especially if you have a lot of content that you need and you do want to make it a little bit more formal and you're okay reading from mm -hmm. script. Those script apps, I know I've used them for huge. So in the same vein of talking about scripts, it's good to have a specific topic that you want to talk about. 
there are millions and millions of videos on YouTube, so maybe find something that's trending. You can use a Google search for specific keywords that you can actually have a topic that you're talking about, so it's gonna be purposeful. Yeah, and do your search and optimize for SEO, especially on things that are trending, like you said. If there's something blowing up and super popular, you might be able to create a parody or spinoff related to your industry or your channel, right? Uh, and kind of jump on that wave of attention. Uh, and I know uh, I'm a pretty big fan of TikTok with the just super, super short He's a videos, huge right? Fan. There are nothing but trends on that app that you can kind of replicate uh, on your own channels and your own YouTube channels or Instagram or wherever you're creating this content uh, and basically be where the attention is. Put it in the bun. <laughs> so next you want to plan ahead. So figure out where are you going to be doing your video? Is it gonna be at home or is it gonna be out in the open in the elements? You may have to plan for lighting, noise, other distractions. So keep all of that in mind. Yeah, uh, do you actually know what this is called? The little fuzziness right here? No. It's a dead cat. I kid you not, but yeah, uh, the whole goal of the dead cat is to eliminate the sound of wind coming. That's why it's like this. It's not just for fashion, although yeah. it looks cool, it, uh, it but it helps. Fur? Is it cat fur? Yeah, so if I were shooting outside, I'd probably want to have a dead cat, <laughs> this kind, uh, and make sure that I, the, the elements, it, like you said, aren't going to impact my video. Because the last thing you want to do is spend hours filming whatever you're filming just to go back home and okay. start editing and realize none of this is usable and you just waste an entire day. And if it was like an event, like a one-time event, no. like it's done, like that was it. So as we were talking about planning ahead, thinking about your lighting. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna be outside, you may have to think about, okay, is the sun gonna be good, shadows, whether it's inside. You may not be able to be in a studio like we are that has lighting to make sure that you can be seen on camera. So you have to think about your lighting. Yeah, lighting is so important. It makes basically a regular video stand out. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know if you're at home, I have, I bought on Amazon one of those ring lights just to have lighting right. when I film at home. Uh, and there's some super inexpensive lighting kits that you can get online, whether you're shooting in your, your home or you're going on location, if you will. Uh, you wanna make sure that you are prepared. Cause like we said, with the wind and the elements can impact it, same thing can, and with the, uh, the actual lighting itself. There are a couple of things you can do too if it's like really, really sunny out mm -hmm. to help kind of prevent that, that lens flare, if you will, and the UV rays. Uh, so you can get a UV filter, pretty inexpensive if you have a DSLR or another video camera. Mm -hmm. And then there's lens hoods you can put on the end of your DSLR camera itself, on the end of the lens, and that basically blocks out the light so you don't get those weird lens flares in your shot. Unless you want it, it, that might be your artistic flair, it's up to you. The next thing you wanna think about is your clothing. You don't wanna wear something that is super obnoxious and distracting. You want people to pay attention to you and of course what you're presenting on camera. Absolutely, I mean, your colors are a little distracting. It might just be you. I look good. But yeah, not, not so much for the clothing too. Uh, you also wanna think about the background behind you. Mm -hmm. And I know we have a ton of stuff behind us. We have that little bokeh effect where it's kind of blurred out, so it's not super distracting. Mm -hmm. But you wanna think about what's going to be behind you, especially if you're out and about. Are you gonna have some randos in the back messing <laughs> up your shot? You don't know. So you wanna make sure you plan ahead for that. All right, so now you've planned ahead, you thought about all these things that we just mentioned, now it's time to record. Now, don't put too much stress on yourself because sometimes you may have to do multiple takes. It's okay, you don't have to do it all in one take, but you know, you can edit those things out later. Absolutely. And I think the uh, the one take itself is super important, right? I know when I first started with uh, creating videos for myself, I didn't really understand editing all that well. Mm -hmm. And I thought I had to do everything in one take, um, which is tough. You spill over your words a lot. Like imagine if we had to do this with one take. We Of course, we do it in one take. It's all lies. <laughs> take 674. <laughs> but no, you can't edit and cut it and uh, there's, especially on YouTube, jump cuts are becoming just mm. the norm. Jump cuts are basically while, while you're talking, if you mess up, you kind of wait a second, do whatever, and then jump right back to it. When you edit, you just cut them together. So it's, there's a little bit of a snap, but users are, are okay with it and they, mm -hmm. they, they really don't care, right? As long as the content that you're giving out is valuable. And also you want to speak clearly. You want your audience to understand what you're saying. You don't want them to strain to hear you because they're not going to want to watch you. Right, absolutely. And I think being on, on camera takes a lot of practice. It's a lot harder than a lot of people think. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when we first got started, we were kind of like stone cold face, not the most expressive. So my hands were in the pocket, uh, super <laughs> stiff. 
you gotta loosen up, you gotta use your hands. Maybe not as much as me, I'm kind of all over the place. <laughs> I've hit people with them before. Well, you wanna be interactive and engaging with the people that are watching and speak to them. Don't Try not to use like, yeah, everyone is doing this or we are doing this. Speak as if there's only one person in the room and you're talking to them. So as I'm talking to you, you think I'm talking to you, right? Not anyone else that's watching this video. Make it personal, make it interactive with them. Too, but not too personal. You don't wanna give out all your information like where you live. Sometimes in this day and age with social media and yep. things online, some things can be overshared. So yeah. just be cautious about those private details that you shouldn't let everybody else know. Now you recorded your video, now it's time to edit it. You just put it on the computer and you have all these different kinds of platforms and applications that I'm pretty sure Nilly knows so much more than I do about. Yeah, you just put it on your computer and it does itself. It's like magic. Yeah. Just kidding. Editing is a lot of work uh, and it takes a lot of practice. There are tons of resources out there to learn and better understand. There's also some programs that make it a little bit easier. Uh, let's, let's talk about a couple of the easier ones. We'll go into the more complicated ones that give you more control. So I think if you're a first time user using something like iMovie or WeVideo.com are great resources. Uh, WeVideo.com is an online video editor. It's pretty simple, straightforward. Uh, they do charge a monthly subscription to use it, but like most editors do, uh, it's gonna cost you. iMovie, it's built, baked into to most Macs. Uh, otherwise, there's Adobe Premiere Pro. It's, probably the one that I use most often. Mm. I'm just familiar with it. Uh, it may not be the, the best out there in some people's opinions, but I like it, it works for me. And then another one that's pretty cool is DaVinci Resolve. Mm. It's, it's an open source video editor, so mm. it's free to use and it's pretty comparable to Adobe Premiere Pro. Mm. Uh, I might end up switching to it at some point um, just because it is that open source and I'm all about open source and the community behind it. I'm all uh, about free. So you may wanna have music in your video. And just like with the editing software, there are some free and paid options. YouTube has its own library of free music. SoundCloud also has some music you can use for free. However, some artists do ask for you to credit them when you're using their music. Yeah, uh, there's Epidemic Sounds and Incomtech that's super popular to use. I know I've been uh, using Envato Elements a lot. It's a subscription for like digital assets and they have a ton of free music and sound effects too. So if I want like just random sound effects in my video, not going over the top, but just something subtle, right? To make it a little cinematic, I'll use some of those sources too. Make sure you have some type of music in your in your videos, right? I would I would say I haven't seen a video, I don't know, the last time I remember that didn't have some sort of music in it, whether it's a TV show, a commercial or YouTube video, most of the good ones will have some type of musical elements in it. All right, so now we're ready to upload the video. And when you do that, just like with us, we have someone dedicated that's gonna write out the description, they're paying attention to the keywords. You wanna make sure your video is SEO friendly. Yeah, think of the things that people might be searching uh, to get to your content. Mm -hmm. So if we're making a video to how to make YouTube, right, we're gonna have that information in there mm -hmm. and all the relevant keywords and, and descriptions within our, our captions itself, right? So I think also too, you wanna to make sure that you utilize all of the elements that YouTube gives you, mm -hmm. like the infographics like this and the end screens at the end of the video to really maximize the platform because YouTube wants people to stay on their platform. Mm -hmm. And if you can recommend similar videos that they'll want to continue to watch and stay on that platform, YouTube will reward you by giving you more exposure to people. So also think about subtitles. Now, when everyone's, some people are watching your video, they may be in a place where they can't have sound on. So having those subtitles come across, very beneficial. Also, YouTube has about 80 different languages. So everyone doesn't always speak your language. So having those subtitles, you wanna make sure that you make it accessible for as many people as possible. And also the hearing impaired community. We wanna not forget about that community. These can be potential members of your audience that you don't wanna neglect. Yeah, so those captions aren't always the best. Mm -hmm. uh, Rhett and Link did a super funny YouTube video where they essentially did out a script, mm -hmm. let YouTube do its auto transcriber, and then they filmed that again, and then let them do the video transcriber. Oh, boy. And it was just the most crazy context that you could ever think of, and it just didn't <laughs> make sense. And if you could think about the, the hearing impaired mm -hmm. or someone that like, doesn't understand language, your language is the first language, or maybe they just wanna uh, read and not listen, right? Mm -hmm. And they see some things that may not be what you wanted to say, 
you wanna make sure you actually update those. And you can do that inside of YouTube. It'll go basically line by line as you play the video. You can update it. It doesn't take that much time and it is worth it to your audience. Also, there's a paid service called Rev if you're willing to go the paid route and they actually have a pretty good form where they can get all those subtitles in there for you. Mm -hmm. We are so excited for you to make your first video or your hundredth video. If you like this video, make sure you give us a like, add a comment below on one of the most recent videos you, you made, and then subscribe to our channel and ring the bell so you're notified when we have fresh content coming your way. This is The Journey. Thanks for watching.